back to the community, everybody, and thank you all for being part of it and sharing the channel. We're gaining momentum fast, and a lot of new people are popping in, and of course, our normals every week. This week, we're going to do something a little different, and the reason being, one, I'm waiting on parts. Number two, I'm waiting on a chemical that I want to test. And number three, my wireless mic will be here today, but it won't be here until after 5 p.m. So I'm kind of using this one right now. Uh, it works, but it's up and down in volume, as you might have noticed in the last video, it was really low, or maybe the video before. Okay, so today what we're going to do is people that are new to the air-cold beetles, things that, you know, you should have an idea of what they're all about. And if you already own one, there's some things you may not know yet, or things you may find amusing. <laughs> all right, let's get on it. Before we get started today, I wanted to do a very cool shout out to a little guy named Oliver. Thank you, Oliver, for being part of the community and supporting by purchasing your member shirt. Thank you for being part of everything, buddy. Stay tuned for more. One thing mainly you're going to find out about air cold Volkswagen Beetles is you should carry spare tools. I did a video on that. I should probably do an updated video on it because I've uh, come across more things that you should have on you, especially on long trips. Uh, are they going to break down? Maybe. Depends on how well you are at taking care of it and the maintenance. So one thing, these compared to other cars, uh, if you remember years ago with our older vintage cars when we were driving them daily then, you might have carried, you know, on a trip, a quart of oil, a little bit of extra antifreeze or something, or water. Uh, uh, some duct tape, like silly things. But with these cars, if you're going on a long trip, you should uh, get used to carrying a tool pouch or a small uh, toolbox in your trunk just to be safe. Now, this one here is a given with any vintage car. However, I think a little bit more with the Beatles. Mostly, okay? When you are out, expect people to stop you and your beetle, of course. Expect people to wave and smile. Usually, some people do ignorant stuff, but normally, when you go to get gas and you're pumping your fuel, expect to be two hours. Uh, many times in the past, you know, I had went to uh, Sheets down over the hill where we used to live, and I would leave to get fuel and come home about an hour and a half later. Heather would say, where were you? People talking and everybody has owned one or knew somebody that owned one or their grandfather or their father, you know, and these were, I mean, come on, it was 21 million made. So obviously everybody knew somebody that owned one. So prepare to be stopped a lot and talk to about it and be nice because these cars make people smile and then sometimes, you know, punch bug, you know, that's what it's all about. It's the fun. Now, what is next? Money pit. Now, any vintage car can end up a money pit. Everybody knows this word. It's used commonly when it comes to cars. Maybe houses, girlfriends. But the point being, you can get into a lot of money at first. So just expect that. Uh, if you go spend $20,000 on a Beetle, or even a 15, you're probably getting something that don't need quite as much, but they're still going to need a little bit. These are older vehicles, so they're going to require some money. Uh, do they like to have a lot of money put into them after they're done? I've never really ran into that much. You know, anything can happen on a car. That's just given, okay? However, I've never really ran into it that often unless you start wanting to upgrade and do silly things. Then it's gonna be a money pit, but expect it at first. All right, move on to the next one. They're like a cult. Many people that own Jeeps, they all hook up. There's clubs, club meetings, shows. Beatles are another one like that. And I brought up Jeep because they're popular too. I'm not saying Beatles the only one, but Beatles, if you see another Beetle owner, yep, you're pulling over. You you know, or you go to a car show, next thing you know, you made a bunch of new friends. 
Uh, Beatles are amazing that way. They actually bring people together. And that's a wonderful thing, in all honesty. Uh, when I first started messing with Beatles many years ago, that would be in 1980, I went to a completely different town in my Beetle, messing around. I was young, 16 years old, and I drove through a McDonald's parking lot because there was a bunch of cars all lined up, kids hanging out, you know. And usually when you come from a different area, people are not as accepting back in the day when you were young. There was an orange Beetle there. His name was Jim. And uh, <laughs> I seen him get into his Beetle and jump in and take off after me. And I pulled over and we were friends for a very long time. He moved out of state, so I haven't seen him in many years with raising kids. But that's a story for you uh, is, yeah, Beetles bring people together. Now, one thing you're going to need to really do as a Beetle owner is become a mechanic. I'm not saying there aren't people that work on them. There are some guys out there. But not like years ago where you could go to any local garage and they would service them or take care of them because there's maintenance to do on these. And, of course, they're different than an average bear. So when you own a beetle, you better know how to work on it or find somebody that does. But you want to try to learn. There's many DIY channels out there with these, uh, and they will help you through. I'm still building everything up in this channel as much as I can for your little inventory index to go through. So learn how to work on them. You're going to need to know. Okay, now we come to winter time. Do they go good in the snow? Yes, they really do. They will dig in and pull out. However, the front ends can get a little light. So I've gone around bends before and uh, they keep going straight. <laughs> I like to add a little weight to the front, but I'm not advising you on what to do with your car that way. Uh, we're going to talk about heat. There's many people that say they froze to death in them. They had no heat. I've never ran into that issue. Never, ever. As long as your heater channels are solid, which they should be, with no holes in them and your heater boxes are working properly, you should have plenty of heat. Plenty of heat and never an issue. But some people say, no, I froze to death. My windshield wouldn't defrost. Uh, I've never had those issues. If in fact you're running one without heater boxes, you can get a diesel heater online. Uh, I have a friend, Gary, that uh, runs his Beetle year-round. It's a Baja, and honestly, he runs one of those. They're nice. People use them in RVs a lot, so that's just a little added feature if you'd like to do it if, in fact, you have other issues with your heat, which you shouldn't, if you're doing it right. Now, these lovely little motors are going to need maintenance. These are not like your uh, newer Japanese cars or even the American cars where Oil changes are every 10,000 miles and pretty much just drive them. These are going to require maintenance, which is changing your points and condenser, okay? Adjusting your timing, knowing how to adjust the valves every other oil change. Uh, there's certain things you're going to need to know how to do. Obviously, we're not going to bring up oil changes because all vehicles need their oil changed. But these require a little more maintenance because they're kind of mechanical, you know. And I know all vehicles are, but there's no magic with these. It's all mechanical. So you're going to have to get used to doing maintenance on them, which is quite rewarding in the end when you're doing it yourself. Now, here's something that changed over the years. Everybody was grabbing beetles years ago for the fun, and they were cheap. People like cheap, okay? We all do, though. We like to save money when possible. However, they went up in price a lot. I never would have predicted that Beetles would have went up as much as they did, but they climbed. The buses, the fastbacks are crazy priced. Carmen Gia's are way up the ladder. Uh, the Beetles are probably more fairly priced than some, although I've seen split windows bring $40,000. Uh, honestly, I still believe they're fairly priced for stepping into a vintage car as opposed to some vehicles. Although I'm a big fan of all the big three automakers plus AMC. I mean, I like a lot of different cars. However, Beetles always stole my heart. So one thing to know, if you're new getting into this, okay, be prepared because they cost a little more than they used to. But if you can find one for two or three grand, even $1,500, but plan on following all my videos and restoring the car.
Now here is something about the Volkswagen Beetle that always amazed me. Uh, there's people out there like Tim Allen, Jay Leno, a lot of very famous people. And there's a lot of people out there that have a lot of money. And there's a lot of people out there that don't have so much money. The one thing everybody has in common is they like the Beatles. I've been to events throughout my life where some guys got a lot of cash. And they did very well in life. And that's awesome. And he had a Volkswagen Beetle. And they're hanging out with a guy who's pumping gas for a living. That is one thing amazing about the Volkswagen Beetle from actors like Ron Howard to Jay Leno to Tim Allen, uh, probably many others. They own Volkswagen Beetles and they'll stand at a car show and talk to a guy that barely has anything that has a Volkswagen Beetle. Not that everybody shouldn't get along. We're all created equal. I'm just making a point. It's quite a unique car that brings people together from all different levels of life. Now this is something strange that I've noticed with uh, the Volkswagen air cold and water pumpers. They multiply. Some folks end up addicted to them and end up owning quite a few of them. Now I've been pretty good about that over the years, but basically because I'd not had the room until now. <laughs> so, and raising four kids. Uh, a lot of people say they're multiplying. Well, that's because you keep buying more and you won't let none go. But that is kind of uh, something about the Volkswagen Beetles, air cold basically. They multiply fast. And here's a few more little things. They all get names. I don't think I have known any Volkswagen Beetle owner or Gia owner or bus. You know what I mean, air cold. They all have names. These people name these cars and I'm just as responsible for doing that, however, I've had cars in the past, pretty cool cars. But I never named them. But my Beatles always had a name. Uh, that's quite funny, in all honesty. And they seem to pick up personalities. Yes, we create them in our head. But we see them as a passion. So we take on our Beatles and Gia's as having a personality which we create, but it is quite funny. All right, so here's something that everybody can relate to. They all have the same smell. Now, I had uh, restored a mob restoration on Gracie, you know, the Super Beetle, and that probably didn't have the smell when I was done because I had put new carpet in, aftermarket seats, etc. They all have that distinctive odor uh, from the old horse hair, I guess, the vinyl, the cheap vinyl. Uh, so when you get into a beetle, you know it. You could know blindfolded that you're sitting in one. They all have that certain smell. And <laughs> that's just something that's hard to get rid of unless you completely rip it apart. But I think it's kind of cool, as odd as that sounds. And while we're talking about smells, I know, bear with me. Gas. A lot of people get a beetle and immediately I smell gas. Technically you should not be smelling gas, uh, but if your charcoal canister is not functioning properly and before the charcoal canister they were vented to atmosphere underneath the car. Underneath, I did a video on it actually, the hoses underneath the trunk in the front. If any of them have cracks or anything, you're gonna have fuel odor inside the vehicle. Uh, sometimes you won't even realize it. I remember when I was young, I know, bear with me. I was 16 or 17 with my one Beetle and I walked into the gas station and I must have really smelled like fuel and didn't know it because the girl behind the counter said, do you smell gas? Uh, yeah, it's me. <laughs> so you want to make sure you repair those crusty old lines up front. So a lot of the things that we went over on this aren't bad. It's just a different experience when you have an air-cold Volkswagen. Uh, even the oil changes are much closer together. You're not doing 3,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 miles. You're doing them closer together. 
Do I think they're a great car? Absolutely. I think they're the most unique car ever put on the planet. But if you're new to them, well, then there's things that I went over that you'll need to know and get used to. And it's not a bad thing. I think Beatles, truthfully, just have that personality that give you your personality when you're out. When you're driving an old vintage car, no matter what kind it is, and especially an old air-cold Volkswagen, that mechanical feeling going down the road, it sure takes all the stress away. It washes everything away, unless you break down. But then again, let's take care of our cars so that don't happen. Well, that was this week's video, and I do apologize. Although it was fun to make this, to be honest with you, it brings back things to the mind. But like I said, I'm waiting on parts, and I can't do a lot without them. Uh, I even placed a big order on Amazon for more wire wheels and a couple other things I wanted to try out for wire, wire wheeling underneath the back, you know, where your uh, luggage rack is underneath. Where your luggage compartment is underneath and uh, the cradle area because we're going to rust bullet all that. And I promised I'd film everything and I do. So I'm just in a kind of a pinch for this week with waiting on stuff to arrive. Uh, I think... Next week, I may be going ahead. Wait, here comes Rowdy Roddy Piper. I believe I'm going to be interviewing someone with a 92, I believe, Mexican Beetle. His name is Justin. Uh, I believe I will be interviewing him this coming weekend here and it'll be up next week. So I'm really excited about the interview. He's a great guy, and I'm looking forward to hanging around with him, having something to drink, and checking out his Beetle. So thanks for being here. I appreciate all of you. Don't forget to share the channel with others or into some groups that you may belong to, and get them in here. And I'll see you Sunday night at the chat at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I hope everybody has a safe Friday night.